Yo, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about PID tuning. Um, now, I want to point out that this is not going to be a PID tuning guide as such, but this is going to be going over the different parameters of the PID controller and showing you the effects in flight and in the black box so that hopefully when you come to do your maiden flight and you fly default, for your maiden and you record some black box you'll be able to look at that black box and have a better understanding of what parameters to change and why and by how much uh, what effects they're going to have on the quad and the way it flies so yeah as i say it's not a guide but uh, a step-by-step -step guide and i don't recommend you going out in the field and tuning your quad this way uh yeah the reason why i'm not doing a proper guide as such a step-by-step -step guide of you know first going out flying your quad and what to change is more because there are just so many different setups out there there's so many different quads now ranging from tiny whoops all the way up to cine lifters um, uh, there isn't one guide for every quad out there um, but I think it would be I just thought it would maybe be more interesting and more beneficial to just show you um, the effects of changing the parameters of the PID controller just so that you have a better understanding of what your quad is doing and what parameters you may need to change to improve the flight performance. I'm obviously working with my Osiris build and yeah, as I said earlier, there's so many different variables. So all of this is all going to be based on my my setup. Uh, so I should briefly explain that it's obviously, uh, if you've seen the previous videos, you'll know that it's a standard freestyle setup, battery on top and HD camera on top. And I'm running a GoPro Hero 9 and a 6S 1100 milliamp hour China Hobbyline LiPo. Uh, the battery weighs 200 grams and the camera weighs uh, about 180 with the TPU. So they're kind of, they're quite reasonably well balanced. Uh, the all up flying weight of my quad is 735 grams, which is on the heavy side, but I'm running DJI and a GoPro Hero 9. So it's expected to be um, around that sort of weight. A lot of people are running quads that weigh, you know, 800 grams and above so to keep it under 750 grams with a Hero 9 and a DJI setup I think is perfectly acceptable um, however you know I am going to learn later on spoiler alert that perhaps the T motor Pacer V2 2207 motors that I'm running are just not really up to the task of uh, of what I'm asking from the system. So what I mean by that is that, yeah, it's, it, you've seen, it flies really good. I, I've posted videos of me flying it. It flies great. It's, it's got tons of power, you would think. Um, but what I'm getting a lot of is motor saturation. So what you'll see a lot coming up is that my motors are saturating and that's causing like wobbles and things. Yeah, so unfortunately I've found a limitation in my setup, which is the power to weight ratio. I just, my motors are unable to pro provide enough power um, to achieve the rates that I have set. So I like to fly a thousand degrees per second um, and the quad can easily do this thousand degrees per second but it's slightly struggling to get up to that 1000 degrees per second. Uh, it's just not tracking set point fast enough. Um, and no amount of uh, upping the PIDs or, or upping the feed forward is ever gonna solve that. It's, it's, a, it's a mechanical limitation. So uh, I know that there are a lot of people out there that are struggling with the problem as well, with this motor saturation problem. Uh, yeah, <laughs> in a future, I have, I'm working on that at the moment, but for now, all I've got to work with is the stuff that I've been working on for the last month, and yeah, uh, it should be interesting. So the first parameter of the PID controller that we're going to look at is the PD balance, and how changing this balance between the P and the D affects flight performance. 
So to show you the effects of the PD balance more clearly, I'm going to turn off the advanced PID features, uh, the feed forward and the D min. The D min is going to be pushing and lowering the D and the feed forward is going to be pushing and lowering the P. So that's just going to make it really difficult to show you the, the, the basic uh, effects of the PD balance. So we're going to, I'm going to start by explaining to you how I've set up my beta flight by turning off those advanced PID features and using the PID profiles to set up different settings so it's easy to switch using the DJI goggles out in the field. And uh, yeah, then we're going to be looking at the results. All right, let's check it out. Later. <laughs> Right, so we're out here now in the field. Uh, got my Osiris all finished up, all nicely tightened up, taped up, and zip tied up, ready to go on the Maiden. So, in terms of beta flight, I'm running beta flight 4.3. I've turned the stick response slider all the way down and set the feed forward transition to 1.0. Um, I've turned Demon off. Uh, I've left the PD gains and the PD mas and the master multiplier at one and all I'm doing is I'm just going to increase the PD balance so it's just increasing P uh, to the point where I feel like there's too much P um, then I'm going to turn it back down again and that'll be the PD balance sorted yeah sorry to interrupt the video here but I've just got to point out that the PD balance slider is working just as I say in the video when you increase it or decrease it it's just increasing or decreasing the P gain on previous versions of the configurator and previous versions of the firmware the PD balance slider does work differently so you just want to make sure you look at the PIDs and see how the numbers are changing when you move that slider in this session I've set up three PID profiles PID profile 1 has got the slider at 1.2 PID Profile 2 has got the slider at 1.5 and PID Profile 3 has got the slider at 1.7. Uh, this means that I'll be able to check each one and should be able to find a nice PD balance to work with just on flight feel alone. Uh, but then I'll be heading back home after this session and checking out the black box to determine which of the three actually was closest and whether I need to do any further testing. So. Back to bloods. Then I could uh, turn up the PD gain if I wanted to, if I felt like I could handle a bit more D. Um, but to be honest, the default D gain when you turn off D min is like the high 30s anyway, so that's pretty good. Especially when my default filter settings, uh, I've skipped just running default, gone straight to running um, LPF2 uh, 150 with um, RPM filter. Uh, just a standard kind of bog standard setting. Yeah, let's see how it goes. Laters. Okay, PID profile one. Well, my thinking here is that to test PIDs, you don't just need you don't need to do a massive long flight. I think just thirty seconds Get doing to, uh, all the yeah. axis. Yeah, do what. Yeah, do what you need. Should be enough. Yeah, there and then. Yeah, you don't need to do a long flight to. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> 
Okay, second half of this battery I'm going to do on PID Profile 2. <laughs> alone I would say the P is gone a little bit too high could hear it a little bit there like a little bit um, so my third PID profile is P up again the D is fine the motors are just like a little bit warm which I'm happy with um, yeah okay so I'll try PID profile 3 now with a fresh pack okay PID profile 3 <laughs> really hard to tell that felt better. I was getting bounce I was getting a little bit of bounce back but it did feel a bit better I think it's that's yeah and my motors are a bit are hotter than before now so yeah I think that's pushing it too far okay, yeah. I'll go back to PID profile 2 and just fly it around and see how it goes okay so back home now and gonna take a look at the three black box recordings from the three different uh, PD balance settings that we tested earlier on. So when looking at a black box log you will want to look for a part of the log that's similar to this where you're doing a full stick input on one of the axes. In this case we're looking at a roll, uh, a roll stick input. So when you do a stick input uh, that translates to a set point. The set point is where the quad wants to be and that's represented here by this green line. Um, the purple line is where the quad actually is. Uh, so when you move the stick, of course, the, the quad is no longer in the position that you are commanding. So the P comes in to push the quad into the position that you are commanding to bring the gyro back onto the set point. So the whole idea of tuning your PIDs is to get the gyro to be as close and, and to be tracking the set point as closely as possible. As you can see here, the P comes in and the gyro starts to move towards the set point and starts to come more on track with the set point but then you can see that the D is also coming into play here and that's coming in to stop the quad from moving towards the set point. 
so it will it will push hard and start the quad moving and as soon as it starts getting to that set point the D comes in to stop the quad dead on the set point and then it holds at the set point until you move the stick back to center um, which is the end of the stick move represented here by the set point moving back down you can see the same thing happens again but in reverse the gyro falls off the set point so the P comes in pushes the gyro back towards the set point and then the D comes in to stop the gyro right on the set point. Um, now what I'm looking for here and you can see it happening quite a bit is that the gyro is going past the set point at the full stick deflection. So that's what's called overshoot. So the gyro is overshooting the set point so it's actually rotating faster than the then the set point than we want it to. So you can see that the set point says it, is, it wants a thousand degrees a second but the gyro is actually moving at 1100 uh, degrees per second. So that's a 10% rotation overshoot. So you can see in this example that uh, because of that overshoot the D has failed to stop the gyro on the set point so in this example the P has actually come back into play and pushed back. I call this P pushback. So the P has actually had to come into play to push the gyro back onto set point. Uh, and then the D is used again to stop the P right on the set point. Uh, so this is a good sim signal that the P gain is too high compared to the D because the P is not waiting for the D to bring it back onto set point and it's coming back into play with that P pushback to make sure to bring the gyro back onto the set point. At the end of the move when the stick is moving back to center uh, it's not such a big deal the P is just pushing and the D is enough to stop it pretty much dead on the set point there's only a tiny amount of P pushback so I would say that just looking at this one role in particular, the P, the PD balance is too high on roll. And you can see here when we're rolling in the opposite direction, the same thing is happening. The gyro is overshooting and instead of the D being able to stop it on the set point, the P is actually having to push back the opposite direction to bring it back on track. But on the exit, on the end of the move, when the stick is moving back to center, the P is not having to push back. So it's not a lot of pushback, but it is enough, uh, it is more than I would like to see. I personally want to see no, or like a really small amount of P pushback or no P pushback at all, because the P pushing back will lead to oscillations if it pushes back too hard. They're two good examples of rolls uh, with a PD balance of 1.2. So now let's check out the pitch. So you can see here on pitch with a PD balance of 1.2 that there's only a tiny little bit of overshoot with the gyro and a very small amount of P pushback to bring it back on track with set point. Uh, so the balance between P and D there is working really well. It's not causing any oscillations uh, when the stick is at full deflection and it's not causing any oscillations when you return the stick back to center. So to me it's looking like the PD balance of 1.2 on pitch is actually very good but it's a little bit too much for roll. Uh, let's take a look at the next uh, the next PID profile which was the PD balance at 1.5. This should show you a little bit more on roll especially uh, what the overshoot looks like and what uh, the P pushback looks like. So yeah as suspected you can see here that the, the gyro is overshooting the set point and the P is having to push back but it's pushing back harder this time and actually causing the gyro to go past the set point the other way and P is coming back again to bring it back. This is an oscillation that is what we don't want. This is called, this is P-term oscillation. It's quite fast and it's extremely hard to see while you're flying. It's some. It's almost. It's quite hard to see in your HD footage as well. 
um, use is what you have to use black box for. Uh, this would be, this is borderline acceptable because it's not a huge oscillation. It is returning the gyro, is putting the gyro back onto the set point very quickly without a huge amount of oscillations that are throwing the gyro off the set point. So it's, it's all about getting that gyro to track the set point. So you can see it overshoots slightly um, and then there's a tiny amount of oscillation to bring it back on track with the set point. Now we're looking at pitch at 1.5 PD balance and you can see uh, that it, the, it's a similar situation to the roll where it's overshooting quite a bit to the point where the P is having to push back uh, to bring it back on track with set point. Uh, one thing you will notice happening quite a lot is that P is actually topping out. That's topping out because the motors are spinning as fast as they can. They've reached their maximum output. So there's the P can only push up until the point where the motors are saturated. Uh, and at that point, there's not a lot more you can do. So uh, it's good to know that the P is hitting that high point, but you, in my opinion, you don't want it to be having to hold there for so long to bring the gyro back on the set point. Uh, this is where the feed forward comes into play later on, so I'm not too worried about that. It's more just looking for overshoot and the P pushback oscillations when you enter the move and looking for any uh, P pushback os oscillations uh, when you return the stick to the center position. So yeah, 1.5 on pitch is now starting to cause a bit too much P pushback in my opinion. Uh, but let's take a look at 1.7 just so we can get, show you an extreme example of what too much P looks like. Got a really clear one here where, yeah, the P and the D are really, they're just fighting, fighting each other and causing this crazy oscillation. So, but it's all started by there being too, too much P in the first place and it having to use the P to bring the gyro back on track with the set point. Uh, when you return the stick to the center point, we're now getting uh, P pushback oscillations, um, which will show up in your footage. That's when, when I'm doing those snap inverted 180 rolls um, and it's a little, and then there's a wobble when I release it, uh, uh, inverted, and it wobbles. That's the P pushing too hard and causing these P pushback oscillations. And uh, now looking at the pitch with a PD balance of 1.7, you can see that it's pushed it over the edge quite a bit to the point where the P is pushing back hard on the, when you enter the move and it's having to push back quite a bit. So it's a good sign that the P is just, again, it's just too high. The PD balance is just too high on pitch at 1.7. So what have we learned by doing a PD balance of 1.2, 1.5 and 1.7? Well, clearly from the black box results, all three of those settings are too high. It's pushing the, the, the P is just, is too too high compared to the D, and you'll get we're we're getting P overshoot and we're getting P pushback. I decided that I'd use PID profile one and two to do exactly the same as what I did earlier, but I'm going to do it with a PD balance of 0 0.8 and a PD balance of 1.0, which is basically flying default PIDs. I'll take you back out into the field now, and we'll have a look at what. Um, what, what those two PD balances look like. OK, 
Okay, so back home again, looking at the black boxes of those two PD balance settings of 0 0.0 and 1.0. Checking out the roll here, you can see that it's actually looking pretty good. There's no overshoot at all, um, which is a good thing. There's no P pushback on the way in or the way out of the move. Yeah, it's there's no oscillations. There's it looks quite clean but one thing that stands out is that it's just not quite getting to the set point um, it's kind of it's rising really sharply and then kind of slowly getting to the set point it's kind of got this undershoot effect so this is a clear example of undershoot caused by p being too low or d being too high which is your PD balance being too low. And as we found in the other tests, the pitch needed a slightly higher PD balance than the roll. So this is an even clearer example of uh, the PD balance being too low. It's really struggling to make it up to the set point. Um, it drops off much sooner than the roll and has that slower um, arc to reap before it reaches the set point. So again, obviously no P pushback or no oscillations or anything, but it's really struggling to get up to the set point. So now we'll take a look at the PD balance of 1.0 on roll. And you can see here that the gyro gets right up to that set point and basically just stops dead on it. This is exactly what we're looking for. Um, it rises. The gyro rises nice and quickly with the set point, and as soon as it reaches that set point, the D is there's enough D in play to stop the gyro right on the set point with only a tiny, tiny little bit of P pushback just to make it settle. Uh, and this is this is exactly what we're looking for. To me, the PD balance of 1.0 on roll is perfect. So let's have a look at the PD balance of 1.0 on pitch and see how that looks. So you can see here that when I'm pitching forward, the uh, the, gy the, the, the gyro is struggling a little bit to get onto the set point. Uh, clearly not doing as good a job as the roll. So I would say that the PD balance is a little bit low. But when I take a look at doing, when I'm pitching backwards, pitching down, so doing a backflip, it's a lot more like the roll where the uh, gyro is getting onto that set point nice and nice and early um, and sitting on it. There's only a tight, there's no P pushback at all and um, there's no oscillations as such. So what could be causing this difference between when you're pitching forward and when you're pitching backwards? It's got to be the balance of the quad. I've got a GoPro 9 up front and I've got a 6S battery at the back. There's no getting over the fact that I have more weight over the rear half than I do over the front half, uh, other than moving, trying to get the battery right up over the middle of the quad. I'm not so sure that this is a very big difference um, for the balance, but it's certainly something I'm gonna have to look into. Maybe I'd been maybe I pulled the battery a bit further back. There's quite a bit of adjustment on the Osiris. I've taken a look, and um, that's the only thing I can think it can be. It looks like the uh, forwards pitch is not quite reaching the set point quick enough for my liking. So I actually like the look of uh, the the PD balance of 1.2. So it's been a couple of weeks now since uh, recording all of this, and. Yeah, uh, I've had a lot of time to think about it and explore different theories of uh, which way to go and the best way to explain uh, what's happening here. And yeah, like I set out at the start of the video, uh, I think I've, I'm pretty sure that I've hit um, hardware limitations where the motors can't produce enough power uh, to hit my set point um, as closely as you might like. But in reality, it's flying really nice and I don't really feel like it needs to be pushed any further. But as I said earlier also, uh, I am 
looking into uh, using bigger motors, bigger props to hopefully overcome this issue. Um, I'm also going to be testing running uh, a GoPro session instead of a Hero 9 and see if it is just a case of the weight being too much for those motors or if they're just utter crap. <laughs> we'll see. So yeah, you'll have to stay tuned for future videos regarding that. Just by doing this simple test of increasing the P and leaving the D where it is and by not running any of the advanced PID features, we've now been able to really see what's going on and learn quite a lot from those tests. Uh, now I feel like the difference between the forward pitch and the backwards pitch, um, that's coming down to a case of there just not being enough P or D together, so the gains. Uh, so this leads us on nicely to looking at the next parameter of the PID controller which is the gains. Now there's two uh, sliders in Betaflight that can control the gains. There's the master multiplier which will control the gain on the P, I, D, D min and feed forward all at the same time and, and keep them all in sync. And then there's the PD gain slider which will increase the P, the D, the D min if you're using it and leave the I and the feed forward where they are. So by adjusting the gains, uh, that leaves the balance where it is. So the P to D balance stays the same and the ratio between the P and the D stays the same and they both move up and everything all moves up together, keeping the ratios the same. Um, and as we've seen in those previous tests, keeping those ratios the same is really important. Uh, there's no point going out and tuning your quad and just increasing P all the time because all you're going to be increasing is the PD balance and as, a, as our tests have shown uh, it's really the Betaflight devs do know what they're talking about and the PD balance is really good at 1.0 uh, on pitch and roll um, because it really comes down to the fact that my quad has got a lot of weight going across the pitch axis so it makes a lot more sense it makes a lot of sense that the gains need to be higher on pitch than they are on roll now betaflight already does this and you can see that the gains are higher on pitch than they are on roll by doing this simple pd balance test we can see that clearly the pitch is not reacting in the same way that the roll is reacting to the changes um, so the gain on the pitch needs to be higher, even higher than Betaflight has already set it. And luckily there is another, set, uh, another slider setting that you can adjust called the pitch and roll ratio. So I've used the pitch roll ratio slider and pushed that up to 1.2. And we know that a good all round PD balance slider setting is 1.1. So yeah, at 1.0, the, uh, the roll is working really well. At 1.2, it was going a bit over, but 1.1, it's not a lot, it's not, there isn't a lot in it. And if the PD balance is slightly high and causing overshoot, then we can use the D, when we bring the D min back in, that will hopefully solve any overshoot issues that that may create. So now by adjusting that pitch roll ratio, the gains on the pitch have increased, but the gains on the roll haven't increased. Looking back at the PD balance tests, that we can see that when the PD balance gets up to 1.2, the P is high enough that it's able to saturate the motors. So we know that we don't want to move the P up much higher than that, um, but we need to move the P and the D up together. We're going to use the master multiplier. We're just going to bump that up to 1.05 to give us a little bit more P and D and keep the ratios the same, increasing feed forward and item all at the same time because they're all nicely balanced. We're also going to bring, we're going to be bringing back in the feed forward now that we know that we have a good PD balance, we're going to bring the feed forward in to help keep to help push the gyro back on track with the set point, and we're going to be using D min so that we can push the pids a little bit harder to to help uh, to give the feed forward a little bit more gain 
to work with. So yeah, now we've learned that the P can't go any higher than these PD balance tests. We can see when the P is so hot, too high, it causes the motors to saturate because they're pushing too hard. So it's all about finding, first finding the PD balance that works best and then pushing the gains to the point where the P isn't pushing too hard that it's saturating the motors. I found with my setup that just by setting the pitch roll ratio to 1.2, the max multiplier to 1.05, and the PD balance to 1.1, uh, and bringing back in the D min and the feed forward, it's just as good as it can get. It's the P is pushing as hard as it can without saturating the motors too much and the D is working really well and boosting when it needs to in, in the sharp moves and the D min is dropping the D down so that when I'm not doing aggressive moves or whatever and when I'm doing full throttle punch outs the, the D isn't causing any oscillations and that is really as hard as I can push this quad. I, I can't push the PID controller any harder without the motors saturating uh, there's no point adding feed uh, any more feed forward because all that will be doing is pushing the P harder earlier in the move and that also will be inducing saturation in the motors and what happens when the motors sat when one, one motor saturates apparently the ESC detects that and just cuts the power to it when it cuts the power to it, Betaflight has to compensate by dropping the power to the other motors and this can cause an instantaneous little wobble which then Betaflight also has to compensate for and yeah, it's it's a nightmare. So the best to minimize the amount of wobbles that are happening with throttle cuts and end of stick sharp moves you have to minimize the amount of motor saturation and the only way you're going to do that is by not pushing the PID controller so hard and keeping those P's nice and like where they need to be and yeah we haven't had to bump anything up to anything ridiculously high and the quad is flying as hard as it possibly can without the motors saturating. Okay and yeah so that's about it that's the end of my uh, the PID tuning of my Osiris. Um, I'm going to leave you with a, a raw pack and there will be more coming every Monday night with Monday Night Raw so make sure you subscribe to uh, catch that every Monday night I'm posting a raw pack at the moment. So yeah I'm going to leave you with a raw pack now uh, of this flying with uh, my final PID tune and you can see that it leaves me with a nice mid throttle cruising quad that I can cruise around over the trees in all sorts of weather conditions it's often it's so windy down here all the time in Cornwall um, so it, it withstands flying in the wind there's no crazy oscillations going on the prop wash is so minimal I really don't I really don't care about it um, there's just like the occasional tiny little shake as it sorts itself out and away I go the stick response I can't get it to respond any faster to the sticks simply because the motors will saturate and so hardware limitation as I keep saying. Betaflight 4.3 has definitely come along in the last week or so and uh, I've managed to work alongside one of the lead testing test pilots that works with the devs and come up with a really good filter setting that not only cleans up the noise as much as running a, a, a low pass at 150 uh, but it cuts the phase delay almost in half and it just widens that tuning window okay so yeah i hope this has been helpful and uh, if you've got any questions leave them in the comments section below i'm happy to help everything that i've covered in the filters video and in this video should be enough to show you what you need to do on your own just use a bit of black box um, inspect the logs and take it from there um, so yeah stay tuned and until the next one laters <laughs>